Hello and welcome back to my uh, next video on biological molecules from OCR AS F212. Today I will be, well, now I will be doing proteins. Proteins make up 50% of the organic material of a cell. So the majority, in other words, they are very, very important. They are made primarily of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen, though some contain sulfur as well. They are used in many structural reasons. You have collagen, which is used in skin, ligaments, and keratin, which is found in nails. Um, they are also used as carriers. If you know about cell membranes, they are used as protein carriers and protein channels are used to transport ions, glucose, basically things that won't fit through a phospholipid bilayer through into the cell. They're used as enzymes. All enzymes are proteins. Very simple, same for hormones, same for antibodies, all proteins. This is an amino acid. This is the basic building block of a protein. We call this a monomer. All amino acids have certain things in common. They have an amine group, which is NH2, and they have a carboxyl group, which is COOH. And that makes the amino acid. Then there's a C and an H in the middle, and a variable R group. This is different for each amino acid and makes it what it is. Now, different R groups have different properties. The most simple one is just another H. But you can have, you know, nitrogens, oxygens, carbons, whole chains, rings, all sorts of things. And some will be polar, so some will have slight charges, and then these can form ionic bonds, or some can have hydrogen oxygen in and form hydrogen bond bonds some will be polar which creates which makes them hydrophilic because they will like water and some will not be polar and be hydrophobic so they will not like water and some contain sulfur now like all monomers they take part in condensation and hydrolysis reactions condensation reaction is very simply when two molecules join together, create a new bond and release water. That's a condensation reaction. When two amino acid groups form, they create a bond and release water. All these bonds are always covalent, but is a different name for each type of molecule, so carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. For proteins, it is called a peptide bond and is made out of the OH of a carboxyl group and the H of a amine group and then that is obviously what you get if you look at the picture. There are different structures that make up a protein. The primary structure, and this is a good definition, they like asking this in exams, the specific sequence of amino acids in a protein. Very simple, if you have protein 1, 7, 3, 2, 9, 8, 20, 1, 6, 5, there are about 20 amino acids and you line them all up that is this, that is the primary structure of a protein. Now, the primary structure could be the most important because it kind of determines what the protein will be. And it is this which will then change shape into the specific shape of a protein. A protein has to be a specific shape or it will not work. Very simple. Now, one thing about amino acids like carbohydrate, which I will be doing later, is that some amino acids are essential. That means the body cannot synthesize them ourselves, which means we have to eat proteins to get these essential amino acids in forms of polypeptide chains. These polypeptide chains are then broken down through hydrolysis reactions. A hydrolysis reaction, since I forgot to tell you, is um, when you add a water molecule and the bond is broken, opposite of condensation. And then you get these amino acids, which can be rebuilt into polypeptide chains which we can use. Plants can make these essential amino acids because of photosynthesis and the taking up of nitrates which is a part of amino acids. Animals interestingly cannot store amino acids because the amine group is toxic so we have too many we die. Simple. So a process called deanimation occurs. This is when um, the liver for animals um, breaks down the amino acids and then they're removed in urea, urine. 
Now, after primary structure, you have the secondary structure. This is the coiling and plating of parts of the polypeptide. And two products are formed. Either if it's coiled, it's an alpha helix. If it's plated, it's an alpha beta, sorry, beta plate or beta plated sheet. And that is the secondary structure. Now, this occurs because of hydrogen bonds, very just hydrogen bonds. If you look at the structure of an amino acid, there are many O's and many H's and many OH's, all those all over the amino acid. These form hydrogen bonds with each other, which coil the structure or plate it in examples. Next, the tertiary structure. This is the overall 3D structure of the protein. And there are four types of bonding which occur with the R groups, which affects the shape of the protein. Di disulfide bonds or bridges. This occurs between amine groups that have sulfur in, in, partic in particular cysteine, or cysteine, however you pronounce that. And this is just a double bond between two sulfurs. You have hydrogen bonds, again, between um, R delta plus R's and delta minus R's. Ionic bonds between completely ionic R groups and completely you know, positive and negative. And then, I said earlier, some are hydrophobic, some are hydrophilic. Hydrophobic, they hate water. So they'll go into the middle of the protein to get away from water. Hydrophilic will be on the outside. That's how tertiary structure works. And there are two main types of tertiary structured proteins. There's globular and fibrous. Sorry for my spelling fibrous, but uh, I had to correct it. Spelling is my strong point. Globular. These are when they're, well, globe rolled into a ball. They are usually soluble in water and they perform generally metabolic roles. They are found in the uh, reactions. Enzymes are all globular proteins. They, they are the ones that catalyze reactions and make it make things go a bit faster. Um, examples, as I said, enzymes, antibodies, hemoglobin, as I'll come on to a bit later. Fibrous proteins surprisingly form fibers. Who would have guessed? They are usually insoluble in water and have structural roles, so collagen found in you know, skin, keratin in nails, that. Now, some proteins, such as haemoglobin and collagen, have a quaternary structure. This is when proteins are made of more than one polypeptide. Haemoglobin, for example, has two alpha polypeptide chains and two beta polypeptide chains, which are moved into the ball. A collagen has three polypeptide chains. And not all proteins have a quaternary structure. Some are just simple enzymes will have just one structure, but some have a few more. Well, a few more polypeptides added in, that's the quaternary structure. Haemoglobin is a globular protein, soluble in water. It has many different amino acids. There are 20 amino acids it can choose from, and it has most of these in some form or another. It also has a prosthetic group. A prosthetic group is a group that helps the uh, molecule work. And the, the, it's a non-protein element, but the protein couldn't function without it. In this case, it's a heme group, hemoglobin. This is made from iron, F2+. And this is what binds with the oxygen, because hemoglobin is an oxygen-carrying molecule. And the iron in the heme group is the bit that actually binds with the oxygen. So without the heme group, then hemoglobin would be useless. And most of hemoglobin is alpha helix. Collagen is fibrous, insoluble in water, and it's 35% of just one amino acid, glycine. It has no prosthetic group, and it's mainly made of left-handed helix structures. So yet again, more helixes, or helices, helix I. One of them. Here's a picture of how collagen works. Three polypeptide chains, they're coiled, which provides great tensile strength, and hydrogen bonds form between them. The hydrogen bonds as usual, help with the strength. And then you get you get covalent crosslinks between different collagen molecules. Um, well, yeah, different molecules. We count one molecule as the three polypeptide chains wound again round each other. And then a fibril is when you have lots of these molecules covalently bonded together with crosslinks. This makes them staggered, which helps with strength. It means that collagen is flexible, not elastic. It's 
it can't be stretched but it is flexible it can move to a certain extent but it is still strong the three coiled chains make it strong as well as the cross links right. now the exciting part of the video the questions yay as usual these will be from past exam papers and well I'll give you the answers and time to think about them so question a describe how two amino acids join together three marks b describe how R groups can interact to form the ter tertiary structure of a protein and c state two properties of collagen that makes it suitable for its purpose for example if it was in if it was in skin I'll now give you a chance to pause good so question a peptide bonds form between H groups from amino acids while well, the H part of an amine and the OH from a different carboxyl group so they're from two different molecules in a condensation reaction where water is released B some R groups attract others repel you have disulfide bonds between cysteine or cysteine groups which contain sulfur you have hydrogen bonds ionic bonds hydrophobic R groups inside the protein and hydrophilic R groups outside the protein and finally properties of collagen has high tensile strength not elastic it's insoluble in water and flexible in conclusion proteins are made of amino acid monomers which forms the protein or polypeptide polymer the primary structure is the specific sequence of amino acids the secondary structure is the coiling or plating using hydrogen bonds the tertiary structure is the overall 3d shape of the protein and the quaternary structure is if more than one polypeptide chain is used the two main examples you need to know are collagen which is a fibrous protein which is insoluble in water used for structural purposes and is has three polypeptide chains wound around each other tightly with cross links between different collagen molecules creating great tensile strength and haemoglobin which is a globular protein made from two alpha chains and two beta chains with a prosthetic heme group actually four of them which carries oxygen around the body it is soluble in water and yeah that's it actually but um i hope this video helps as usual leave any comments saying if i'm doing amazingly or terribly or if my drawings are plain awful because they are just anything you want which can be used to help my videos if there's any specific video you want because i won't necessarily do it in order just say and yeah also it would be nice if you can like or subscribe but uh, i understand if you won't but uh, yeah um thanks goodbye